Hi everyone, Michael Brown here. I'm your Adobe Certified Photoshop Instructor at Educator.com. In this Adobe Photoshop CS6 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take an original photo, which you see on the left here. Uh, this could be any photo. This happens to be a studio shot done by a student of mine, Tizio Bruni. And I selected it because it has a lot of nicely defined lines. And we're going to create a line art photo blend from that photo for a very dynamic graphic slash photo look. So let's get started. Okay, here's the original photograph. And you notice there's our layers panel with a singular layer in it. I always recommend duplicating your background layer just in case somewhere down the line you mess up and need to go back to the original. It's always there. There's four ways to do that. Layer drop down menu, layer duplicate. On the layers panel, the drop down menu, duplicate layer. My favorite is the two key shortcut, command or control plus the letter, command on a Mac, control on a PC plus the letter J. Or the fourth way is to take any highlighted layer or layers and drag it or they down to the create new layer button at the bottom of the layers panel and it will duplicate. And I'm going to duplicate it one more time using the shortcut, command on a Mac, control on a PC and the letter J and we're ready. We need to convert this layer to a pixel black and white layer. If I was to use adjustment layers, which are non-destructive mathematical representations, there's the black and white. Notice we have a black and white, but it's a mathematical separate layer. The actual layer is still colored. Command or Control Z to go backwards one. What I need to do is do this on the pixels. So we we'll go to the image adjustments, same adjustments, but these work on the pixels. And there you go. And if you look, there's the layer, black and white. I'm going to adjust the yellow up a little bit and the red down just to snap it slightly. Click OK. And to snap it even a little further, again, this is a layer that is pixels I want to work directly on. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Curves, which is my exposure control. Put a point in the midtones and open up the midtones by going up to the left, another point for shadows and pull it down. And you can see what we've done is increased the contrast. I'm going to open up my history panel that allows you to go back and forth as many steps as you want that are set in the preferences. I have 50 steps set. And there was the black and white original. Notice it's a little flat. The curves snapped it up a little bit. Now we're ready to make our line art. I'm going to duplicate this layer just for safety. Command or Control J. Turn off the other one. We're highlighted here. So we'll go to the filter menu. Oh, before I do that, I want to set my default colors at black and white. Black foreground, white background. That will affect how the filter gallery works. Filter, filter gallery. We're on texture, close that up, open up the sketch, and go to photocopy. And there you have it. Now, if I had had my foreground background reversed, this would have been a negative image. The two sliders, detail goes from very little to a heck of a lot. I'm going to pick about three quarters. Darkness, of course, goes from light to dark. And again, we'll go about three quarters. Nicely defined edge work. Click OK, and there we have it. The only problem I see is the obtrusive shadow here that doesn't look really good. So we're going to paint that out. Paint in white. You paint with a foreground color. Reverse with the arrows. There's white. Paint brush. Increase the size with the right bracket key. And I'll paint in white. Now you see how easily I'm doing this. I use a graphic tablet by Wacom, W-A-C-O-M. This is with the stylus. You're painting just like you're using a brush much easier, faster, and more accurate than using either a mouse or, God forbid, the touchpads. Uh, I preach quick, efficient, flawless work in Photoshop. That's the way I teach. Every second that you save is a second extra that you have to work on an image. Okay, there we've got it. So we have that. Now, I'm going to duplicate that just as a safety measure, turn off the duplicate, or the original one, and we need now to remove the white background. We're going to go ahead and select the magic wand selection tool. Now, across 
We're going to put a high tolerance in here. 64 is very high. 44 is pretty high. It's only black and white. This, by default, contiguous means continuous areas of color. Uh, if that's checked and I do my selection, notice the little flicker only goes to the white area. It doesn't go down into the cabinetry. It was blocked by edges. Command or Control D. If we uncheck that, it will look for all of the white areas. Notice how flickers are now everywhere. To pick up the gray tones, select Grow. That will grow it just a little bit more. Now all we have to do is go Delete on a Mac, Backspace on a PC, Command or Control D, and now you see the line art. The black and white transparent checkerboard, there's your line art. We got it. Now all we need is the colored, textured background to enhance this a little bit more. So we're going to create a new layer below this existent layer. I'm going to make a mistake deliberately and create a blank above it. Very easy to fix. Click, drag it below. There's our layer. We'll go to the Edit menu down to Fill. And we're going to fill in color at an opacity of 100%, normal mode. And we're going to pick the color with the color picker here right off of this. I'm going to pick it off of this um, placemat and click OK, click OK again, and there you have it. It looks a little dense, so now I can create an adjustment layer, which I can change at any time if I don't like what I've got later. This time we can do it mathematically for hue saturation. There it is. There's your adjustment layer. And it has a layer mask, but we're not going to use that. Saturation can go anywhere we want it. Pull it down just a hair and make it slightly more yellow. I like that for now. We can change it. And we're going to highlight that layer and go back to the filter gallery again to create our texture. Get out of the sketch, over to texture, and hit the texturizer. And there, with four choices, I've picked sandstone, a high scale and relief, and the light from the top left. You have all of these choices, but I want to match it with the photo lighting. Click OK. And there's your textured um, line art is created with a texture colored background. I want to lighten that up a little bit, so I'm going to take an adjustment layer for curves and lighten it just a little bit. If we don't like that, we can always come back and change it. Now, we need to add the, uh, the photo back in, so we'll take the first duplicated copy, highlight it, drag it to the top. There it is. And we're going to mask it. This is how you mask out part of the image. We're going to put a reveal all mask. White reveals everything, as you see with our adjustment layers. In this case, with the little frame around, it's highlighted. I'm going to put a gradient of black to white, black to white, across the layer mask to mask out the left half, holding the shift key to constrain the gradient to a straight line. Start at about a third and move it to about here. And there you have it. Let's get rid of the history panel. And there you can see that we have gone from the basic image to the finished product using only two physical tools, the gradient and the paintbrush, two filters. And we used a hue saturation and an exposure adjustment layer and shifted with another feature to black and white. All of just those few things to go from the original to the finished product. Now, you will learn all of this and more. This is just scratching the surface of the tools and effects that you will be able to create in Photoshop if you study my entire course at educator.com. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you soon.